Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service. Good morning, welcome to our Sunday service. Well, also a good morning from me. Uh, it's great to have you with us. My name's Tom Webber, I'm the vicar here. And whether you're part of our existing church family or whether you've been joining us online, maybe for the first time today, it's great to have you with us. One notice this morning, which is to say, obviously we've all been very concerned about our hospitals during this time of the pandemic, all the stress and strain all of the services are under. So this coming Thursday, um, I'm going to invite you to join with me as we pray together for our hospitals and also our local school. We'll do it on Zoom, 7.30 this coming Thursday, and you'll find the details of how to sign in on the connected sheet. It'll be on the website under events and also on Facebook. And so just as we begin, chance to be quiet together in your living room as well as mine and to recognise God's presence with us. Our first song is a lovely one. You're the word of God the Father. It's got the chorus. You're the author of creation. You're the Lord of every man. So is his children, men, women, boys and girls. So we sing together. You're the word of God the Father.
we sing about the fact that God is Lord of every man and woman. But the truth is you and I have avoided that from time to time. We've slunk away. And this isn't just something for one or two of us. This is something that affects us all. As First John reminds us, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's come together, all of us, to confess to God. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you and me. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Very often on our third Sundays of the month, of which this is one, we hear from some of our mission partners. And we're going to hear from the Morrissey family now. Hello, we're the Morrissey family. I'm Mike. I'm Helen. I'm Lydia. I'm Elijah. I'm Gabriela. And we're living and working in Senegal in West Africa. We've been sent here by Wycliffe Bible Translators and we've been partnering with Christchurch for uh, five or six years now. Last time we made a video for Christchurch, um, we here in Senegal, we were all in lockdown along with you in the UK. Um, so at that point schools were shut and we'd actually moved um, temporarily to stay in apartments next to our offices so that we could continue to access those. Um, as with the UK, case numbers did drop back in the autumn um, and so we were able to return back home and the children have been able to go back to school. Um, and at the moment, Senegal is in a better situation than the UK is and we're very thankful for that. So, Case numbers are relatively low um, and most aspects of normal life are able to continue. One of the big highlights of our time here over the last uh, six months since we last spoke with you um, has been the dedication of the New Testament in the Indic language, which is spoken in a neighbouring region to where we are. Um, this is the culmination of, uh, of, of decades of work, uh, of, of the hard work of many um, people both from our organisation and from the local community and uh, it was a huge privilege to go as a family to celebrate um, the arrival of the New Testaments and to see them start to be distributed in the local community where we pray they'll be read and, and enjoyed for many years to come. The big thing on the horizon for us as a family is that 2021 is the year that we're going to be moving back to England and leaving Senegal. Um, so we thought we'd ask the children a little bit um, about how they're feeling about all of this. So, Nidra and Elijah, what, are you, what do you think you're going to miss about living in Senegal? Our friends. So, Lydia, what are you going to miss? Our friends. Mm, we've got some really good friends here, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. And Elijah, what about you? The rain. The rain. Yeah, we don't get rain very often, It's only in September, October, and occasionally, um, only at the start of November. Yeah, and what do we like to do when it rains? Uh, do we just stay inside? Uh, do we go outside and dance? <laughs> we do. Yes, we do, silly. And so we're going to be moving back to England. What are we looking forward to about going back to England? Snow. Snow, maybe. Hopefully. Um, our grandparents. Yeah, we haven't seen some of our grandparents for a really long time, have we? Yeah, 2020. Tabitha, what are you yeah. looking forward to? My my um. Wellies. Welly boots. We've said to Tabitha she's going to have her own pair of welly boots and jump into muddy puddles when we go back to England. And May. We'll see. 
We're so thankful for your uh, support and your prayers for us. And um, as you two are going through a difficult time, um, we, um, we're praying for you. And we hope very much that we can see you this summer uh, when we return to England. God bless. Thank you. Bye. 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 As we continue with our verse for the year, how it was that Peter and John were transformed and those looking on noted that they'd been with Jesus. So this morning, Ian's going to explore in our talk a lot of the ramifications. What does it mean to be with Jesus? It's a quite amazing passage we're going to use. And Dave Milson is going to bring us our reading now. Today's lesson is taken from Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. The Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning we're going to look at the last words as recorded by Matthew of Jesus. These are words not of loss or of wishes that things had been different as sometimes you get maybe at a dying person's bedside. But here the words are of hope, of promise, of future. Words of a new beginning. And I want to deal with it in four sections, if you like. Alls, four alls. All authority all nations, all things, and always, or as it is in the Greek, all the days. But first, let's have a look at all authority. All authority, that is, all power, all energy, all dominion, all jurisdiction, all rule is Christ's and his alone and has been given to him by the gift of God the Father above. And that is everything is under his rule, everything in heaven and on the earth. There is no place in heaven or on earth where his authority does not extend. The gift of God to his son is to rule and to rule a kingdom that is without end. That was promised. Do you remember the readings at Christmas time where we have Isaiah chapter 9? The government would be upon his shoulders. The increase of his government, there would be no end. He would sit upon the throne of David to order it and establish it. And here we have in Matthew's gospel, in these last few verses, a picture of Christ upon the throne, his rightful place. But even there, he remembers his own. Now, some of you have probably got a chorus in your mind right now. And have a think of that um, as you come to this but to them to those who are his own he has a duty and a joy he entrusts you and i his church his sinners saved by grace with a responsibility to carry out his commission go to all the nations he says Go and build up the kingdom of God. Go and make disciples of all nations. Go into the world. Yes, some are called to go and do that. To share ministry abroad, and that is right and that is proper. But many of us are not called to do that. Many of us are to stay right where we are. To minister for God in whatever place God has called us to do. And in whatever way he leads us to it. 
There are many places in this country of ours that is a so-called Christian country. There are many people within it who have not yet heard of the gospel of Christ. And we are tasked with going to them with that message of God's saving grace. But that message of God's saving grace isn't for ourselves alone. It is for all, whether they hear it or not. Ours it is to tell it out. What we are to tell out and to live out is the all things. Or as some versions have it, obey everything that I have commanded you. To put into practice all that you and I have learned from Christ and to pass that on. To live lives worthy of the Saviour so that we can teach effectively those who come to faith. To build the body of Christ. That task is ours. Yet for, yet for us who are to go to the nations, Jesus reminds us to keep watch to guard, to protect the faith that is within each of us, to watch over our faith, to guard it, to keep it in tip-top condition that we can give an account of our walk with God to others. And lastly, he is with us always. And I, I, I love the Greek of this, so I'll, I'll uh, translate it directly for you. It just says, he will be with us all the days. A direct translation that we take as always. God has been there from the beginning and Matthew's gospel shows us that that is so. Matthew records that Jesus was to be called Emmanuel, chapter 1, verse 23. God with us. That presence of Christ was experienced by those in his near family. Those of his disciples, those who came to him. Now in these last words, he affirms it once more. The presence of God is time limited. Yes, you heard that right. Time limited. How long? Until time is no more. That is how long Christ will be with us. I will be with you. I will be your God until time is no more. The abiding presence of God remains with us through his spirit and that presence lives on in you and me as his treasured possession. To Christ was given authority and power, a kingdom and a rule. To us is given the responsibility to go to the nations with the gospel of Christ, to live out that gospel wherever we are, to finish the course of faith that we have begun and to know that whatever it is that we are called to and wherever it is that we are called to, he is there all the days and in every step we take. What I find interesting about these verses is that Christ is there at the very beginning. All power and authority is his. He is there with us always, or all the days. And we are in the middle. It is ours to be cosseted by his presence and his love. And these last words of Christ lead us on. They're not a full stop. But they are a continuing movement of the gospel and mission of Christ. Our God who came to dwell amongst us lives with us still. And what he asks of us is to commit ourselves to his gospel and to go and build the church. In this coming year, are you ready to go and do just that? That verse at the end of Matthew's Gospel really is an amazing one. And I love the way Ian explained it with the four alls. It's amazing what being with Jesus can bring us, as he was saying, all authority. As we go out to all nations, teaching all that he's commanded. And especially he will be with us all of the days. A chance to reflect on those words now as we sing our next hymn. It's uh, Grace is the Darkness and the chorus is 
may now your church rise with power and love as we think of this Jesus who is with us in all those four alls. So we respond together. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, as we enter this third week of a new year, life is still different for so many countries and populations across the world. We are all attempting to do our bit to help shake off this virus, but it isn't easy, Lord. It's so different to the way we've been living, and we need your help, Lord God, to be strong to be faithful and to be kind to others. During this last year, we've heard of some amazing acts of kindness, people who've been able and willing to do tasks, extreme tasks, to raise funds for charities, and who also have been able to help others with acts of kindness, maybe neighbors, friends, relatives, communities. We thank you, Lord, for all those who have helped to make someone else's life a little easier. And so as we think about this father 
who has given everything that he might be with us all of our days. So we respond with this daily prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. As we come towards the end of our service, so I hope that that message that you've heard in Matthew's Gospel of what Jesus said is going to stay with you. The title of our next song is a new one, but it's a lovely one and it's worth getting to know. Hear the call of the kingdom. The kingdom embraces every land, every man, woman, boy and girl who would answer. This Jesus who has all authority and who promises to be with us always. It's up to you, to me, to respond. And here's an encouragement to do just that. We'll teach it to you for a couple of verses and then we'll go back to the beginning. So hear the call. Hear the call. We. Yeah. 
thank you for joining with us this morning. It's been good to have you. I prayed last week a prayer for peace for each one of you. I think at the moment in the middle of lockdown, nothing could be more relevant. It's prayer I often use, but I think is really pertinent to this time. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.